quickly. The president also tweeting tonight, I understand that he's now postponing his trip to Denmark, which was scheduled next week. Can you yeah. explain the reason he gave for this? Because I, you would, I, you would think it's I think made you know up. why. You, yeah, yes. you would think this whole thing is, you would think this is something on Colbert, but it's real. It, it, this could be he, summed although, up you know in what, one word. Stuff on Colbert is real anyway, so it'll That's be on right. Colbert. That's true. Go ahead. This could be summed up, Anderson, in one word uh, and, and one very large uh, place, and that is Greenland. Uh, that we know that the president has had his eyes on recently. Uh, as you know, the president has talked about the United States purchasing Greenland and then Denmark, which uh, has control over Greenland. Uh, Greenland is a semi-autonomous part of Denmark. Uh, Denmark has said, no, Greenland is not for sale. Uh, and just recently, the uh, Danish prime minister uh, has said that that was an absurd prospect, that uh, somehow Denmark would sell Greenland to the United States. Uh, we should point out the president has tweeted about this just in the last uh, several minutes, uh, saying that because of the Danish uh, prime minister's comments, uh, he is going to be canceling his trip to Copenhagen. That was scheduled to happen in early September. And so uh, just because of this one issue of Greenland, the president is calling off a trip to a foreign country to meet with the prime minister, Meta Fredriksson, uh, to talk about, I, I suppose, other issues. But now that Greenland is off the table, the president is saying uh, that uh, he appreciates uh, her for saying that and he looks forward to rescheduling sometime in the future. A White House official said that visit it to the entire country of Denmark for the president uh, is off, Anderson. And yeah, I talked no, to a source sense, close. Of course. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I did talk to a source close to the White House earlier this evening on a serious note, Anderson, who, who suggested that this is one of the president's bright, shiny objects, that he threw this out there this evening after a very tough news day, uh, after some of his comments earlier today about Jewish people showing their disloyalty if they vote for Democrats and so right. on. And so that's the suspicion, at least uh, among some people in Trump world yeah. tonight, Anderson. You know what? If you can't be tough with the NRA, go after the Danish prime minister. There you go. This is CNN's Jim Acosta and Anderson Cooper. And if it seems like they're struggling to keep straight faces, that's because it's 2019 and the president of the United States is trying to buy another country and throwing a tantrum that he can't. And in a way, this is the perfect microcosm for Trump's fake populism. Rather than focus on issues that are impacting real Americans, like lowering the cost of prescription drugs, like passing common sense gun safety measures, like ending his disastrous trade war with China that's driving up the cost of consumer goods, Trump is instead focused on some shiny, expensive thing 3,000 miles away that'll have exactly no effect on our lives. And this is the guy that the working class was convinced would help them. I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I'm not sure this is what they had in mind. But news reports like this one by Jim Acosta and Anderson Cooper flooded the airwaves yesterday, both at home and around the world. And because they were all at Trump's expense, he realized that he's become the butt of the joke, that the world is laughing at him. And so to compensate, Trump took to the White House lawn today to rescind his acceptance of the Danish prime minister's refusal and instead attack her. Denmark, I looked forward to going, but I thought that the prime minister's statement that it was absurd that was a, it was an absurd idea, it was nasty. I thought it was an inappropriate statement. All she had to do is say, no, we wouldn't be interested, but we can't treat the United States of America the way they treated us under President Obama. Uh, I thought it was a very uh, not nice way of saying something. They could have told me, no, this is something that's been discussed for many years. Harry Truman had the idea of Greenland I had the idea, other people have had the idea. It goes back into the early 1900s. But Harry Truman very strongly thought it was a good idea. I think it's a good idea because uh, Denmark is losing $700 million a year with it. It doesn't do them any good, but all they had to do is say, no, we'd rather not do that, or we'd rather not talk about it. Don't say what an absurd idea that is, because she's not talking to me. Excuse me. She's not talking to me. She's talking to the United States of America. You don't talk to the United States that way. He thinks that the way out of this is to prove that he's a tough guy, but digging in his heels for something that is already so earth shatteringly absurd isn't gonna do the trick. If his ego is that bruised because people are laughing at him over his failed efforts to buy Greenland, is his solution seriously to train the spotlight on it even further and turn it into an actual international controversy? 
and he was worried that women are too emotional to be president. And what's worse, he didn't even stop there. Trump then took to Twitter writing, for the record, Denmark is only at 1.35% of GDP for NATO spending. They are a wealthy country and should be at 2%. We protect Europe and yet only eight of the 28 NATO countries are at the 2% mark. The United States is at a much, much higher level than that because of me. These countries have agreed to pay $100 billion more. And while he's content to pat his own back and put Denmark on blast, PolitiFact noted that the increase in spending was in large part attributed to a NATO spending pledge from before Trump took office, as well as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But look, his petty Twitter attacks aside, the fact is that not only is Denmark an ally, but they lost 43 of their own troops in Afghanistan and another seven in Iraq while supporting the United States-led coalition. For a country of just over five million that's not used to fighting in wars, that's no small sacrifice. And yet that's how strong their commitment is to the United States, to NATO, to protecting democracy. But still Trump will attack their prime minister while gushing over Kim Jong-un's love letters, while siding with Putin over our own intelligence agencies when it comes to their election interference, while inviting a murderous Duterte to the White House, while cheering on Bolsonaro as the Brazilian rainforest burns to ashes. He might claim that no one has done more for NATO than him, but he undermines NATO and everything it represents every time he opens his mouth. And no one would have ever believed that it would be the President of the United States doing the most to undermine democracies around the world. But it's real.